Hey there. So I just wanted to give a quick run through of how to create um, a stitching set that will adhere to different surfaces um, that you already have constructed. Now, there are some other methods if you have a surface that needs to uh, move and give and flex, but this will allow you to take an existing surface and attach stitches to it. And uh, this is actually simplified even from just the last uh, incremental update of Modo. So I'm going to walk through just uh, the things that you need uh, to create something like this. This is just a, an arbitrary curve that I placed on this surface. Um, a couple of items that you'll need. You will need a replicator. You'll need a curve particle generator. Um, you'll need a mesh layer with a curve in it, which I've just named curve. Um, and then you'll need something to stick your, uh, your stitches to. In this case, it's this kind of lumpy sphere that I just gave a little bit of extra contour to so it wasn't totally plain. And uh, then you need something to replicate. So a stitch or a group of stitches. It could be more than one. Uh, so if you have a little bit of variation you want to build in, you can do that as well. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and clear out. I'm going to just cut out my, uh, my curve. I'm going to leave my... Um, my stitch in my sphere and replicator. Um, I'll, I'll leave the replicator in here. Here, let's just delete this and then we'll start kind of from here. Let's just say yes to all. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got an empty replicator. I've got an empty curve layer. I have my basic stitch prototype and my sphere. So um, if you don't know where a replicator is, by the way, it's just under particles replicator. Uh, but uh, the other thing that you need is a, a curve particle generator, which is underneath uh, point clouds under particles. So we'll go to point clouds and we'll create a curve particle generator. And personally, I like to set this up so that everything is uh, kind of going in the right direction first before creating the curve. Uh, just gives you a little bit of visual feedback. Uh, you can, however, uh, set this all up after you have everything in place. You could create your curves. You could extract your curves from existing geometry, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and then you can just put in your curve particle generator and your replicator and go from there. So with the curve particle generator, it's going to take the uh, the curves in a given layer and it's going to create particles along that curve. So in this case, my source curve, I'm just going to pick a layer and that's going to be my curve layer, which right now doesn't have any curves in it, but uh, we'll add some here. And you also have the option now uh, to choose either an, in, an individual curve index or you can just choose all curves. All curves is typically going to be better because then if you create more than one, it's going to attach to all of them and not make you go guess which curve is which. Um, okay, so now we will need to actually set up how the uh, the points are working on here. So you have different options for point count, which gives you um, along the length a given number of points, um, which is fairly uh, straightforward, um, but it doesn't do a lot if you have something like stitches. Like these stitches are about two and a half millimeters long. I don't want them to be five millimeters apart. I don't want to have to sit and dial in that number. Or if I change the contour of my curve, I don't want to have to redo that, right? Um, so you have also spacing distance and then exact distance. And these are um, almost the same thing, but what will vary is how the, uh, basically how the end points of the curve are treated. With exact distance, you will always get, if I put in two and a half millimeters, which is what I'm gonna put, um, you will get the exact distance of two and a half millimeters in between every individual um, per particle that's on this curve. Now, if you choose spacing distance, it will allow there to be a little bit of flex so that the number of curves along the curve goes all the way to both beginning and end points. Uh, but with exact distance, you'll actually get a little bit of area where it might not get all the way to the end, depending on your distance, but it's going to be within the margin of your point spacing. Um, so I'm going to use exact distance here, and I'm going to put in 2.5 millimeters. We can adjust that here in a minute. And uh, then I'm going to leave everything else at stock for now. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a curve. And you can create a curve any way that you want. Um, <clears throat> you can... Um, you can, like I said, extract from existing geometry. I'm just going to draw a curve on here, and there is one drawback to that one, which I'll actually show you as well. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me also set up uh, my replicator. It's looking at my stitch for my prototype, and my point source is the curve particle generator. Uh, so I'm going to go over to topology here, and in my curve layer, I'm just going to get my topology sketch, and I'm just going to make sure that the type is set to curve. Uh, precision of 50 is probably usually a good starting point. Setting it uh, to higher numbers will give you uh, less uh, points along your curve, and then it's going to smooth between them. Setting it to a lower number will give you a little bit more jittery curve, um, but will allow you to, uh, to control a little bit better as you draw 
So like if I do this here with my uh, precision set low, you can see it goes in and it uh, and it creates a, a pretty clean curve based off what I did. But if I undo that and I set this to something higher, it's going to look initially like um, I'm not getting as good a drawing feedback. But what it's doing is it's just creating a little bit more sparse set of points. And then it's going to create a, uh, a fairly clean uh, curve off of that with less control points than I've gotten. Um, so I'm going to set this back down to the default, which is 50 here. And let's just go ahead and create a curve. And you'll notice one thing is when you're doing this in topology sketch, depending on the scale, uh, you might get points where the, the curve kind of ducks underneath the surface, just uh, depending on where you may have um, been in the drawing uh, when it drops down the, the vertex for that. So uh, you can clean that up uh, fairly easily. I'm just going to hop back over to the model tab here. And, and you can see where it, it makes a difference at some points here. Like some points here, it's a little bit high. Some points it's a little low. Uh, well, if I go into vertex mode and I just uh, select like the vertex that's here, uh, let me actually take this into default mode so we can see our wireframe and things a little bit better. So I don't need to see my, my grids there. <clears throat> so let's just go in here. Make sure I'm out my curve, I'm in vert vertexes, and you can see actually my problem here is I don't have quite enough vertices to control this surface, which is something that you see fairly often depending on how sparse your curve is. So what I'm just going to do is um, press Shift D, and I'm going to subdivide this. I'm going to use Catmull Clark and just click OK, and what that's going to do is give me a few extra control vertices. So now you see I actually have one here, so I can take that and pull it up so it's up over the surface. Same thing here, and just pull that up. And yeah, so you can go on and, uh, and, and adjust your curves a little bit more fine-tuned uh, that way. Now, if you are deriving your curves from some existing geometry, you tend to have less of this kind uh, of an issue because you have curves or you have vertices along your curve that are actually already um, aligned to the surface. In this case, my, my control vertices are actually pretty much random. They're not going uh, anywhere specifically. Okay, so now a couple things else that you can do uh, with this here. So let's go down to the curve particle generator and look at some of the options that we've got here. So uh, there is another section here in the curve particle generator um, underneath these basic settings called the uh, the curve particle generator control, CPG control. Uh, so under here, I can have an alignment mode and I can have an alignment mesh. So I want to say, I want to set the uh, the the particles that are be created so that they align to the normal of the sphere that's underneath. So if you have um, you know, a bag or a shoe or some clothing, you can align them to the mesh that's underneath here. So I'm going to use my mesh normal, and then I'm going to click a mesh. I'm just going to choose my sphere, and now all of the points are actually going to um, align to the, the underlying normal of the sphere. Um, so that's that's pretty cool and makes things uh, work a lot better. Okay, so uh, so you've got that. Then you also have the option to change the um, the axis uh, for the forward facing for your stitches. So this stitch you can see is facing um, kind of down the positive x, which is putting it up here. Now if I change this, I can actually change the orientation of the stitches. So if I come in here and I see that my stitches are all laid down, something like that, or if they're all like this, you can usually just try a different uh, forward axis and it will f and it will fix that. And then you can also reverse the direction of the axis. So if we look at this case, they're uh, kind of arced to the right. If I click reverse axis, they'll be going the same direction, but they'll be now arced to the left. So uh, you do have these options here for adjusting things once you've got your stitches in place. Now, the last kind of thing on here that's pretty cool uh, that I was going to mention is uh, the the jitter. So with jitter, you actually have some of the control, similar controls to what you get over um, if you're dealing with a replicator with a surface particle generator, you actually get to control jitter, spacing, that kind of thing. So um, you can control things like radial jitter, um, linear position jitter, which you think I think you have to be pretty careful with on something this small a scale uh, because it can really move things a lot. Um, but uh, radial jitter is kind of interesting. So if I click this up, you know, even just small amounts. Granted, these are only a couple of millimeters in size, so. Um, so moving them around an average of half a millimeter is going to make a pretty big difference. Uh, but if I go down to something low, like 0.1 uh, millimeters, so you actually get something that kind of works here. Uh, you can do the same thing. Um, like I said, linear jitter is along the length of the curve, which in this case is going to mess things up really easily. Um, but I do get rotation jitter, and you can see that that is actually just giving them um, a little bit of randomized rotation. Right, and let's turn that back down to zero. And then you also get scale jitter that allows you to, you know, obviously uh, jitter the scale. Now I find that doing really small amounts in here, you know, maybe five to ten percent on scale, and uh, you know, five to ten degrees 
on the on the axis, and then maybe a little bit of uh, radial position, but the other two seem to handle it pretty well. Um, work pretty well because if you're zoomed out here, you can see that everything looks pretty even. Uh, you know, depending on the angle you're looking at, this this looks pretty even, right? But then once you get in close, you want to go on kind of a more, um, you know, macro level, you actually see that there's a little bit of variation there, which is pretty cool. So all those options are built into your curve particle generator, very much the way that they're built into a, uh, a surface particle generator that you would find uh, inside of the shader tree. So, uh, you know, that's really it. Uh, remember that you can uh, change the... Uh, what's going on with your um, with your stitches themselves in order to uh, in order to switch this up? So you know, if I take this whole thing here, let's just take it and move it up off of the axis. So if I just pull it up, you can see I can raise the stitches a little higher, or I could sink them in more. I have those options. Um, I could do stuff like uh, you know, move this one over and uh, mirror it on the, let's see, it looks like so the y-axis. Yep, so I got another one. So I could have a double row of stitches, um, you know, super easy. Um, I could also go in and have several different stitches in here or pull from a, a library, an asset library, and swap out the kind of stitch with something else, you know. So maybe what I would want to do here is, let's go grab both of these. Um, I'm just going to actually here, let's grab just one of these and I'm going to copy, make a new layer and paste. And in this layer here, let's go ahead and center it up, right? Uh, and then what I'm going to do is rotate it this way and then rotate it back the other way and paste that one in. And now I'm going to pull from the mesh layer instead of the stitch layer. So we'll go down here to the replicator and for the prototype instead of stitch, I'm going to choose mesh. And now I've got um, you know, little crossed, um, you know, crossed stitches. So you have a whole lot of options here for how this is going to work uh, to really, uh, really help your workflow. So let's go ahead and one last thing I'll do here is go in and get one of these stitches. Zoom in here so I can actually see them. Uh, and I'm just going to grab the center point on one of these. If I can get to an orientation where I can actually see the center point. There we go. So if I take the middle point of this one and we just pull it up so that we get a little bit more overlap, you know, kind of that idea of overlapping. Now if I go back here to the whole thing where I've got the stitches on the surface, you can see that they're now all overlapping. So just like any other replicator, you have the ability to change uh, and adapt the, um, the prototype and it changes everything else too. Hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thanks and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.